Hey. How's it going? Can you hear me? It is good. Wow. That's a lot of people. <laughs> They're all here to see you. No pressure. No, Only none in front of, of a live. Does this count as a studio audience? Live studio audience. There we go. We've got the applause sign, <laughs> the laugh sign. <laughs> there wasn't as much applause to begin with as we hoped. <clears throat> We're just gonna wait another minute. We're just getting getting up on Facebook Live. Oh. Hey, there is a familiar face. Where? <laughs> Actually says that. <laughs> hmm. You're so much taller than I am. You want to realize? No. I can stand up straight. Oh, cool. Parents. Mm. <laughs> I think that wasn't without saying, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't cut that one. Rob, have you tasted it yet? Cut the other one. There's another one. Sorry, the Facebook Live is just having a little moment. All right. Let's do the uh, susp suspense build. There you go. <clears throat> All right. Well, it's loading, so it'll start in a couple seconds. So let's just get started. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming out to today and joining us for our third Explore Locals session with uh, Patina Brewing and Strive Health. Uh, it's going to be an awesome one. Um, and just with that, I'd like to turn it over to Aaron to get us started. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, yeah, so for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Dr. Aaron Binstock. Um, there we go. Um, I'm a chiropractor and co-owner of Strive Health and Performance. Uh, we are located at Austin and Nelson, just across the street from the new Safeway. And so we do have chiropractic, we have physiotherapists, registered massage therapists, kinesiologists as well that do active rehab. Uh, we also specialize in concussion management. And although we're not doing in-person services right now, we are doing virtual care. Um, so ICBC patients we're taking, uh, we're taking on anyone. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that later, but let's get into the webinar series. So before I kind of get into it, uh, I just want to thank all of you guys for paying attention, tuning in, those who are watching um, after the recorded version. You guys are supporting local and that is what this is all about. Um, you know, we named this Explore Local uh, because we wanted to bring basically what the Tri-Cities has to offer. We wanted to bring it to you from the comfort of your home since we can't really go out and enjoy all the other businesses. So thank you very much. Please spread the word. Um, today, uh, we do have Patina Brewing and I have to say that when I first had this idea, they were one of the first businesses that came to mind because that brewery's been about two years in the making. Correct me if I'm wrong, Will and Christina afterwards. Uh, and they opened like first week of March and then two weeks later had to shut down. Not totally, but you know, they had to suspend a lot of their services. Uh, and I just felt so bad for them because it was already such a hot commodity. So many people wanted to go. Everyone was loving it that had already been. So I'm so glad that they agreed to come on so we can let everyone know all the awesome things that they do and um, will continue to do. So today we do have their executive chef, Christina. We also have their brewmaster, Will, and they're gonna be taking us through the pairing of this delicious brisket right here, some collard greens, and of course, a very delicious colch right here. 
Um, we'll talk a little bit about the process. Why did they pair these together? How do you know what to pair? Uh, and I'm gonna grill them with questions about beer because anyone who knows me, I love beer. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna turn it over to them. Guys, take it over and um, I'll grill along the way. Awesome. <laughs> Strong start, right? <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Uh, thanks for that, Aaron, and, and thanks, Stephanie. Um, so, yeah, welcome to Patina Brewing Company, uh, Patina Brew House and Barbecue. Uh, Christina is the executive chef, as mentioned. I am the beer guy. Um, and uh, just a little bit about Patina. As Aaron mentioned, uh, we had a chance to be open for about 11 really, really glorious yeah. days uh, back at the beginning of March uh, before the whole pandemic had to uh, switch us to off-premise. Uh, but at the same time, we're really excited that we've been able to continue to bring beer and barbecue to the Tri-Cities, and we're really excited. We've got a heck of a lot of ideas uh, for going forward as soon as we're allowed to open up again. Um, so. Just a little about Patina, uh, where we're, uh, we started from a whole bunch, uh, I say a whole bunch, primarily uh, two couples from Port Coquitlam, uh, and their idea was to kind of change the traditional brewery model that a lot of times you'll see. Uh, so instead of choosing an industrial space, uh, generally kind of more out in the middle of nowhere, uh, we were really interested in being part of the community, particularly part of downtown Port Coquitlam, so that you know people could walk. It's it's uh, very easy for people to get to and from the brewery safely. You don't have to drive. It's quite bikeable, quite walkable, uh, and and to really integrate as part of the community and both physically and sort of uh, from our our base values. And one of the things that we're sort of most proud of is is. Uh, in less than a month of being open, we were already able to be part of a, we like to think, pretty successful, yeah. <laughs> overwhelmingly Overwhelming. uh, 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 successful uh, fundraiser for the Share Food Bank. Um, and we were able to raise, I think, three and a half thousand dollars between uh, the contributions of our owners and some private donations, and as well as a uh, significant uh, contribution from our sales that evening. Uh, but with that said, obviously, we couldn't have done it without all of our exceedingly loyal, very quickly uh, customers. And, and for that, we really want to thank you guys for uh, for helping us bring a whole little extra food to the Port Coquitlam community. Um, and that's, that's something that we're really, really keen to do going forward. Um, we're a living wage organization here. And uh, Part of that uh, means where we don't accept tips and uh, we're building into that model kind of if people end up wanting to show that, that extra gratitude uh, from our service, uh, we want to uh, share that money back with the community. So we're really keen on further fundraisers going forward and uh, if there are causes that are important to you, our, our customers, our neighbors, our community, uh, definitely bring that to our attention. That's awesome. He said it all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so, the one who be quiet. Usually that's, I'm... No, that's okay. <laughs> so, I mean, we're going to get a little more into um, what you guys are about, but I want to literally get into the meat right here. Um, oh, yeah. We do not want that to get cold. Well, I mean, it's our, one, one's already missing from about two minutes ago. <laughs> Thank you for buying me some time. Um, <laughs> so, Christina, yes. take me through the like the brisket process, and I've I've heard a rumor that a lot of the food does include some of the beer products in terms of marinade. So, can you tell me a little bit about you know maybe if it's a secret sauce, don't give the whole thing away, but a little bit of the process I of how we no, get it so delicious. I have. Um, I have no secrets. If anything, I overshare sometimes, and these guys have to rein me in. <laughs> um, basically, it's barbecue. And what goes better with barbecue than beer? Um, so when I first tasted Will's beer, we had to figure out what we're going to do to pair it with. Because, of course, I have my own palate. He's got his own. And somewhere in between, we had to fit it in. 
Um, no, none of our meats do have beer in them, except for the sausages. We get these locally made sausages for us, and we marinate them in his kolsch, which you're probably drinking today. Yeah, awesome. Um, when I had his kolsch, I'm like, oh my God, this has to go in a sausage. So we have these really good sausages made for us locally in Pit Meadows, um, and they're made for us, and we marinate them in kolsch, and we smoke it, and it's amazing. But otherwise, all our, all our meats are gluten-free because they don't have any beer in them. Awesome. And so then how did you, how did you decide to make brisket paired with Kolsch, right? Like if I'm at home, I've got a bunch of different types of beers. I've got a few different meats. Like, well, can you take me through what, like, how do I know which to pair with which? Well, that's, you know what? I will, everybody will tell you here. I'm the stout fan. To me, stout goes with everything. If it was up to me, <laughs> you would be having a stout with your brisket. You would be having stout with your cookies that we sell. You would have stout with everything. But not everybody likes stout. Um, <laughs> Everyone likes my stout. No. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, and so I have to t kind of take away my personal taste to some somewhat and take what goes well. And to me, brisket goes really well with the Kolsch. Kolsch stands up for it, uh, to it. It's not too rich. It's not too bitter. It's it's like the perfect highlight for the, uh, the brisket. The brisket does tend to be rich, and the Kolsch cuts into that. Okay. So there is more of just kind of like a preferred taste thing. Um, oh, totally, totally, yeah. And, and it, but there's no, is, there's no necessarily a secret, like for someone who doesn't have, you know, such a fine palate, let's say, uh, is there something, you know, generally like a stout, you know, like white wine goes with fish and red wine goes oh, with... See, and I don't play into that. <laughs> okay. Stout goes well with fish. <laughs> yes. um, no, and I, I will have red wine with anything. I'll have white wine with anything. At the end of the day, it's whatever you want. But then, if, but then there are times where Will and I will nerd out as people, as our coworkers will tell us. <laughs> we will take a flavor compound and just stretch it like a DNA. Just think of it as DNA. It's like this little molecule or little thing and then we just stretch it out. And that's when we figured, oh, well that flavonoid would go well with this. And we get all nerdy about it. And that's how we decided that the brisket would probably go really well with the coach. And it really does. So if, uh, if you want to get into this sort of <laughs> classical uh, um, food and, and uh, beverage pairing techniques, uh, then, then we can get into some of the technical stuff about how alcohol does a really good job of cutting the, the more unctuous fatty notes that you'll get out of the uh, brisket. Uh, the uh, degree to which the beer has been fermented so its residual sweetness is going to have an effect on sort of cleansing the palate and, and you'll find that to be quite refreshing as well. Um, if the beer is sort of more or less effervescent, uh, bubbly. Uh, you'll find that also has uh, a very sort of uh, tactile sensation on your tongue. You're, you're going to find with a Kolsch, uh, compared to uh, other Kolsches, uh, this one is going to be a little more fruity. It's going to be sort of reminiscent of a, a white grape. Uh, a lot of that is contributed by the yeast. A lot of that's contributed by the hops. Um, for, the, for this Kolsch, uh, I deviate a little bit from some of the traditional German varieties and have used some modern German varieties, uh, Hollertau Blanc and Hollertau, or excuse me, and, and Hull Melon. He's um, nerding out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this is to this all is the brewers out there this is and, and all the home brewers. <laughs> and yeah, uh, but yep. yeah. long story short, uh, different ops are going to give you all sorts of different flavors and uh, with the right combinations you can really kind of riff off of uh, your base beer style and you know kind of play both within the guidelines and then color outside the lines as you fee see fit. And for me when I drink the Kolsch I get these little whiny tannin fermenty type flavors which to me automatically boom beef it has to be beef. I think chicken would it would just be lost but when you get the fattiness of brisket especially the sweetness of the end of the fatty deco part of the brisket, you yeah. it holds up to it really, really well. So I'm going to put I'm going to put you guys on the spot here. You, maybe you'll each have a different answer. Um, so <laughs> never see eye to eye. 
Well, that's good. I want variety here. So, um, you know, I'm coming into patina and I obviously have no idea what to pair. Uh, Christina, we'll start with you. If, you're, if I, you're going to tell me, yeah. What's the, yeah, so you got to tell me one beer and one thing from your menu that I absolutely need to have because it's going to go so oh. good together. Okay, he's gonna hate me because I'm gonna promote something that we currently don't have, but it's amazing. When you guys when you guys get your hands on it, it's amazing. Will makes the bestest hazy IPA. <clears throat> Shut up, you do. Anyway, <laughs> I can concur. I've had it. It's delicious. Amazing, and I, this is a person that does not like IPA. Um, normally, I don't. And the first time I had his beer, it was that. And when they told me it was going to be that, in the, in the back of my mind, I'm like, no, please, no, no, no. I had it, and it was actually really good. I love it. Um, now, his hazy IPA with our Alabama hot wings, ridiculous. You have to have it. The IPA's fruitiness goes really well with the Alabama rich, like Al Alabama white sauce richness. And then you get the chicken with the crispiness and the extra fat. It's really good. That's my thing. That's that sounds favorite. delicious. And, or and, still cookies. <laughs> yeah. And, and, then, and then, Will, are you concurring or are you trying something different? Oh, I mean, uh, I absolutely would agree on that one. Uh, at the same time, uh, as, as someone who's constantly bothering Christina for what's, what's the latest hot sauce you've got going on or, you know, what, what are you uh, cooking up as far as the, uh, the, the latest iteration of... Um, of her hot sauces. Uh, she actually used that, uh, that hazy IPA for our hot sauce and we sold out of that pretty quick. Oh yes, um, oh yeah. Which... People were stealing it. Wow. I'm not condoning that. <laughs> when we <laughs> open, I'm keeping an eye on those bottles because yeah. people were literally taking it. So it's a testament of how delicious it is though, so that's are. good. <laughs> uh, but now to, uh, to throw this right back at Christina, um, one, of the, one of the menu items that we've been kind of teasing but haven't had a chance to roll out to our general public just yet oh, is no. the beer masseau, uh, which <laughs> is absolutely wow. tremendous. Um, and Don't promote it, it's such a pain <laughs> to make. <laughs> Can you explain a little more? Three days. Wow. So, but, uh, yeah, it's it's been really, really, it's uh, pairing pairing beer and food is is a really yeah. it's it's a joy. It's it's one of those things that's uh, easily the best part of your job when when you get to just sort of sit there, eat your food, mm -hmm. drink your beer, and think to yourself, oh. I'm getting, you know, this this oh, new yeah. aspect is is being played up that uh, maybe I had noticed before, or, you know, what's what's bringing out say the hazelnut character out of mm -hmm. the amber lager, whereas if you have that same food with the hazy IPA, suddenly you're like, oh, well, this is interesting. You know, I, I hadn't noticed, you know, quite this uh, maybe grapefruit zest character mm -hmm. to it. So it's uh, <laughs> it's it's really incredible uh, what sorts of flavor combinations. Do end out working, and as as traditional as uh, uh, beer and barbecue seems to be, it's it's been a heck of a lot of fun just thinking about where we're going to go from here. Um, Christina and I have been talking about uh, different pilot uh, test recipes, um, both for the kitchen and beer wise, uh, that that are going to be coming out soon. I'm going to be experimenting a little bit tomorrow. Uh, messing around with a uh, rice lager with lime juice so and excited. coriander wow. and uh, yeah. a heck of a lot of uh, heck of a lot of ginger maybe it's just a touch of honey uh, lower ABV so super super refreshing mm -hmm. and uh, it'll be <laughs> it'll be fun to see what we uh, are able to pair with that next and and what happens with uh with the menu as we really kick into the warmer weather mm -hmm. with the taste testing is it like wine where you're sp you're spitting it out or are you just you taking it down each sip uh, well um, i'm not a wine guy <laughs> 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 that's that's the polite way of i saying. don't like things going to yeah yeah you know it's, <laughs> it seems a shame and you know you pay the excise on it all these taxes uh you, you really got to make your make your money for yeah. it but uh it's it's also a heck of a lot of fun to 
you know, do blind taste tests with, mm -hmm. with the staff and say like, okay, you know, here's, here are these beers in red solo cups so that yeah. you can't really, you're, you're given as little sort of uh, input as possible besides just what you're getting from the aroma. And then after that, the flavor, and then saying like, okay, you know, is this more ginger than you'd like to see? Or, you know, how much of, of this orange characteristic are you getting? And uh, then sort of dialing that in. And then after that, it's sort of iteration after iteration of like, you know, is this exactly where this beer wants to be? And as I'm thinking that, as inevitably it seems to turn into two different recipes and then there's the next recipe for what I'm going to try. So you've got, you've got a heck of a lot of stuff coming up. And I don't so mean all, for Cena, but it's probably the same way. Yeah, he knows it is. <laughs> All these delicious products, um, every, I mean, I'm seeing comments like how much you're making people hungry. They want this Nanaimo, beer Nanaimo thing, uh, or beer tiramisu, sorry. Uh, how, like you guys are open to, to a degree, right? So how is everyone going to get their food? Can you explain what the options are? I mean, we take everything. I mean, we've had a few comments that are just so out of this world. But the thing is, if... We can't, we're not perfect. Um, Christina we is. <laughs> I, I, I we can't, bring down the class we, we, can't, we can't think of everything on our own. So you know what? Every once in a while, someone brings something up. Oh, yeah. You know what? That's a great idea. So you know what? If we can get, if, if we can get 100 ideas and 10% of it comes to fruition, that is awesome. Because we don't expect to be geniuses. I mean, we're nerdy, but yeah. we don't know everything. And sometimes you, you need a third party or someone from the outside giving you ideas and inspiration. Absolutely, and, yeah. and to just jump off of that in the same way that Christine and I will play off of each other. One of the, one of the fun aspects of being you know, right in the thick of things in, in downtown Port Coquitlam and being a smaller brewery means you know, we don't have 100, 200 hectoliter fermenters that, yeah. you know, are earmarked for just this one brand two years in advance. So if we have customers telling us, hey, guys, try your hand at a sour, you know, try mm -hmm. your hand at, you know, this barrel aged Belgian style. Yes, <laughs> please. Thank you. Absolutely. That's, that's exactly that. the sort of thing that, that we want to be able to do. We want to be providing you guys, you know, the, the wide range of styles available and, and we want to uh, sort of <laughs> yeah. Yeah, bring that to you guys and, and put our own little spin on it. Well, sorry, what I meant was how, like if people want to order food from Patina, oh, yeah. how are they getting it? Oh, yeah. we missed that one. Yeah, right. <laughs> there we go. Yes, that was, I liked what you had there. Yeah, I'm just yeah, trying to get uh, the product to the people. How do we do that? Yeah, uh, you can go to our, our website at patinabrewing.com. Mm -hmm. uh, we just go to the Patina at Home uh, page, and then you can click on our Square website uh, and put your order in on there. So you can order ahead of time or order for sort of as soon as we're able to get that ready mm -hmm. for you. Usually it's uh, between about 15 and 30 minutes, depending on when it is uh if it's a friday night obviously it'll be a little, a little bit, bit longer, longer. <laughs> um but uh yeah I mean, and and most of the time nowadays it's uh christina and i back there <laughs> in the kitchen christina's doing all the work i'm I, back I there what to putting do. beans in cups <laughs> putting macaroni and cheese oh, yeah. in cups sauces oh, you know in what smaller cups once we're open i'm pretty sure he's good i'm gonna get payback or he's going to get paid back and he'll be like, Christina, go clean my cakes. <laughs> <laughs> got a lot of, got a lot of cakes. Um, but on top of the square website, uh, we do take walk up orders and, mm -hmm. uh, you can also call us here, uh, to, so just phone ahead 604-474-0025. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're, we're staffed with, with the four of us at the moment, unfortunately, uh, with the shutdown, we had to temporarily lay off a lot of our staff. I saw one of one of our staff uh, out there participating. So shout out to they Shayla, uh, still following us. Yeah. And and as soon as we're we're back in action, we're we're gonna be bringing back as many as people as we're able mm -hmm. to. So um, Martin had a question. Um, you, do you guys deliver as well, like Uber Eats? I think I saw that on your website. Yeah, Uber Eats. Yeah, we we do have 
Uber Eats, uh, but ourselves delivering, you, you don't want me in my car delivering your food to you. Forever. <laughs> I drive like a grandma and my car is like a sewing machine on wheels. No, 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 no. <laughs> Leave that to Uber Eats. Leave that to the pros. We did have that one event uh, a few weeks ago where we did have a lot of volunteers that were super awesome uh, that went out of their way and delivered food for them. But that was just a one night thing. For the most part, if you want delivery, it is Uber Eats. Yeah. And I got to circle back to the Hazy IPA here um, because Hazy, Hazy IPA seems to be the craze the last one or two years, uh, myself included, it got me on. This IPA. is really good. It, I, it is. I've, I've had it. So, oh, Will, like, what makes a Hazy IPA so delicious? Like, yours is so delicious, but in general, like, what makes it a Hazy IPA? Yeah, uh, so uh, the, the Hazy IPA as opposed to sort of that, that classic IPA around kind of the beginning of the 2010s, uh, you started to see a heck of a lot of IPAs yeah. where breweries were getting quite competitive with each other, trying to make kind of the most bitter IPA yes. you could encounter. Um, and and uh, breweries have a, a little competitive streak in them, but also maybe a little bit of a, an immature streak that yeah. at times needs to be reined in a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that kind of got out of hand. Meanwhile, uh, a few breweries up in the uh, New England area of the States started experimenting with, uh, with some of the English yeasts um, where you get, instead of uh, some of the drier flavors that you want, uh, you get really, really interesting stone fruit, uh, apricot, uh, nectarine, peachy notes from these yeasts. And instead of sort of settling out of the beer uh, and leaving it a little more clear, they'll hang out in suspension for a while. And on top of that, you started to see a lot of the hop additions uh, being shifted later uh, into the brewing process. So it's sort of the earlier you add the hops, the more bitterness you're gonna get, but generally kind of the less flavor and aroma you're gonna get out of them because it's all sort of boiled away. Uh, and as a result, you ended out with IPAs that maybe you end out with the same amount of total hop matter as some of those really, really bitter ones. Uh, but because they're added at different stages, whether it's in one or more dry hops or just at the very, very end of the, uh, the, the whirlpool, uh, you'll find that really, really fruity flavors remain with much less uh, of the bitterness. And I think that's uh, sort of consequently made the style quite a bit more approachable. And, and I think it's done really, really great things, mm -hmm. uh, bringing oh, yeah. a lot of people to the, the, the beer scene that maybe wouldn't have come to it, um, mm -hmm. expecting a lot of beer to be either this, this very bitter IPA mm -hmm. or, or expecting it to be, you know, your, your fizzy yellow beers um, to be consumed uh, in, in, 16 packs at a time so uh the, it's it's been a lot of fun uh, especially as that that hazy ipa style has has led people to other beer styles that they wouldn't have you know, begun with whether whether that be sours or fruited beers or even belgian styles where you get a heck of a lot more of the uh those fruity softer notes instead of the the traditional just malt forward or highly bitter notes Thanks. And another beer question. So we've got the IPA and now I'm seeing double IPAs. I think I've even seen a triple IPA. Like are people <laughs> getting out of hand here just to like be the next person or is there a method to the madness? Like, can you explain the difference as to like why there's a double or a triple? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's sort of riffing off of um, different, uh, different styles from the past um, where Normal India Pale Ale was, you know, as much as uh, sort of five and a half to seven percent ABV, an expected bitterness range, and then uh, brewers started upping that ABV and upping the bitterness, uh, the the alcohol and the hop bitterness do a really great job of playing off of each other. Um, sort of adding structure to the beer, uh, too much alcohol, and a lot of times the beer will end out really, really hot uh, on the palate, um, like drinking harder liquor, for instance. Uh, whereas if you have just quite a bit of bitterness, 
uh, without alcohol and also a certain degree of malt sweetness, you're gonna you're gonna end out with uh, just a really really unpleasant beer. So sort of the more bitter and the more alcoholic and uh, generally the more hot matter you add to the beer, it ends out from being your your IPA to your double IPA. Triple IPA is an uh, established style, but it, you can generally assume that they've added quite a bit of hops and uh, that it's going to be more alcoholic. I guess you could probably connect it to some of the Belgian styles where uh, they'll serve uh, singles, doubles, triples, and quadruples uh, that are progressively uh, more alcoholic and tend often to have been aged for a little bit longer. That's awesome. I would like to, uh, I would like to be a part of your taste testing during some of your experiments here. <laughs> I'm on down uh, as yeah. soon as uh, we're, we're out of quarantine. Yeah, yeah. Of um, course, of course. When it's safe to do so. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we uh, have one where we've, been, we've been playing in the kitchen quite a bit lately because we're, we're only open for four hours a day for yeah. uh, takeout. But I mean, there's, we're here for hours. Yeah. So we play around. We've been playing with a few ideas. Um, so keep in touch with us because hopefully next week we've got a few things that we'd like to throw in the air and see if it works. Yeah, and, and just to uh, mention something that thankfully someone in the comments reminded me, uh, we actually do have a lunch special um, for a... Uh, pulled chicken, pulled pork, or sliced brisket sandwich with fries. Um, coleslaw, pickles. Coleslaw, pickles, and this really, really tremendous uh, smoked garlic spread that Christina oh, yeah. has made. Yeah, it's good on everything. <laughs> can't, can't it's it's actually it. good on everything, yeah, like, seriously. Cool. So yeah. I just got a, I got a question from one of the attendees right now. Martin wants to know if, you know, do any of your meals have spicy ingredients? They're just kind of asking about for allergy concerns. <laughs> You know, if it was up to me and Will, everything would be spicy. Yeah. But it's not up to me and Will. I mean, <laughs> it is, but it isn't. Um, so we have to make sure that a lot of stuff that we have, we have options that are not spicy. And believe it or not, not everything does have cayenne, which I wish it did. But <laughs> it's not, yeah, that, that wouldn't make any sense. Um, so a lot of our stuff actually, like a lot of our meats don't have any sauces whatsoever. It's just basically the rub yeah. and smoke. And then if somebody wants it spicy, by all means, when you're ordering, just say, hey, can I have extra spicy? And we can do that. And then eventually we will have a secret hot sauce. Oh, well, there is a secret. Oh, it's me. There's lots of secrets. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also the first one to spill the beans. <laughs> That's all right. So on the topic of the menu, Christine, um, I hope there's a story behind this. Um, I noticed a, a menu item called, called Will's Midnight Snack. Oh, geez. So please tell me there's a story behind why his, his item involves eating everything on the menu. Because it's Will. <laughs> you should see him. I thought I eat a lot. And for those that know me, know I do eat quite a bit because I'm just that person. And then I met this guy who makes me look not cool. Yeah. I, I look like I eat like a bird. This guy literally will eat everything, and he's like Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, though. I like that. I like the visuals. Yes. And, and it's like, well, we, we should name something after Will. Well, what should we name? Yeah. It's a little bit of everything, and trust me when I say Will can eat that whole darn thing. It's meant for two to three people. Will can eat the whole darn thing. We've heard some people say feeds three to four. Um, no. It's feeds him. It's all delicious. It's all <laughs> I wanted it to be named the picnic. Yeah. So I got to know what, like, where does the name Patina come from? Oh, that, you can take that one. Uh, so the, the owners uh, wanted to come up with a, a, a name that really represented the company in, in a couple of respects. First off, uh, a lot of brewery names kind of tend towards this kind of ridiculous macho mm -hmm. big steel you know manly brewing company which I, no is it's a little bit uh tired now <laughs> it's and, like a lot of chest thumping and, we didn't and want that. the the brand we wanted to be you know something something that could resonate with everyone so the name patina doesn't necessarily 
alienate or, or scare off uh, any customers. And then uh, further to that, one of the reasons the name resonated uh, was because we want to create something that's uh, not only uh, worthy of, of, uh, of quality and aging, but ages well with character. Uh, mm -hmm. And and so uh, it fit really, really brilliantly with, with a lot of the imagery with uh, and, and a lot of uh, what we're trying to do here, both in terms of the the aesthetic the there's a lot of wood and 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 metal around the uh, around the restaurant brewery as uh, hopefully you can see and hopefully people will find as as they're uh, welcomed back in but uh, but also yeah very much we we want to uh, be something worthy of lasting we didn't want anything trendy we wanted something yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Now, contrary to popular belief, I didn't name it because trust me, I would not name a company Patina because it rhymes with my name. There's nothing <laughs> worse than ending a phone call with Christina from Patina. Yeah. <laughs> not cool. <laughs> I, I almost want to change my name. <laughs> That's, well, you can, it's legally. No. You know, show friends, you can name whatever you want. <laughs> Princess Casula. Banana hammock, but anyway, I digress. Oh yeah, Senior Oink. The next one is Senior Oink. <laughs> so can you, can I request a little like 360 virtual tour for those who haven't been into Patina? Um, because we're seeing the awesome, like where you brew everything, but, um, well, hold on, the, the video's not on you yet. Um, yeah, there we go. So just maybe give a little panoramic view of to what yeah, like yeah. have to move. Yeah. Shall we uh, take you guys yeah. on a little tour? Maybe. Yeah, absolutely. See if we can, uh, carve up a brisket. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, the educational session. All right. So, back here we have the brewery. Um, we're uh, we're gonna be getting lots of fun things going there quite shortly. Um, we have our front of house manager. Sarah, uh, <laughs> taking orders, working overtime as always. Customers, we have a mural painted by a local artist, Taylor Klassen. Taylor, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, it's filled with all sorts of pork coquitlam, uh, Little little Easter eggs and, and iconography. Over here, we have our uh, growler filling room and where we'll be selling uh, growlers, cans, uh, hats, shirts, rubs, sauces, all sorts of merchandise like that. And we're going to walk on back to the kitchen. Oh, yeah. All right. Say hey to our general manager, Tim. Hi, Tim. He's covering for me. Tim is doing the work of two people right now. And let's see that goodness. Yeah, here we have the prep kitchen. Christina, why'd you choose that knife? <laughs> because it's a nicer knife. It's not the practical knife, but it is the nicer knife. Okay, go over this way. Yep, and we're gonna go over that way. New, lovely stainless steel, exceedingly, exceedingly clean kitchen. Very nice. And here's a table. clue as to what's coming up next week. Ooh. We're not gonna tell you exactly what you can guess, though. You're more than welcome. Yeah, these are baby potatoes. What could they be going into? Mm. A roast, perhaps. Perhaps, but no. Wrong. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'll stay tuned. Come All on. right. So here so is the brisket. Christina, explain your technique uh, the way you did to me, parentheses, like I'm an idiot. Um, I, I told him not to mess it up because it takes 14 hours to make. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is our brisket. It takes about four, 12 to 14. This one is a little one. So this one is only about 10 hours. And the most important thing is that we put it against a grain. 
<laughs> that's about it. It's basically salt, pepper, garlic, and smoke. Simplest thing. I have this big belief that if your meat is good, you don't need a whole bunch of fancy doodads and whatnot. Just simple. Sweet. That's, that's I mean, awesome. There are recipes for rubs out there that are like this long of a whole bunch of crazy wild stuff. If your meat is good, you don't need that. Yeah. But that's just me being simplistic. <laughs> That's awesome. That looks so delicious. All right. So can you tell us the, the different parts of, uh, of the brisket and, and what you do to uh, the best I part? I thought it's a webinar. I didn't know it was a less a meat brisket. <laughs> <laughs> now, if this was a bigger brisket, it'd be a, it, it would be better to show you. But this is a little guy. Now, some people like the point, which is this guy. It's super lean. Some people like that. Us, us, Will and I, and Tim, our general manager, we like the fattier, more grisier bit. It's got a lot more connective tissue. It's got it's a little bit more supple. It's a little bit fattier, and it's a lot sweeter just because of the way the muscle is. Fat is over here. I, I like that. But That's yeah. a nice, nice little lesson there. Yeah, well, I, if it was a bigger piece, I could show you even better, but it's a little tiny. This is a baby one. I didn't know I was cutting it in front of you guys. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. <laughs> but, I mean, it's it's a giant. The thing about brisket is a lot of people are really intimidated by it, which is understandable. It's a pretty expensive cut of meat, and it's a pretty large cut of meat. This is only a small 10-pounder. The normal ones that we do are anywhere from 13 to 15 pounds, and they're huge. Um, and it can be daunting to deal with a big piece of meat, but by all means, you know what? Email me, ask me, if you see me, ask me how to deal with it, and I'll show you how to do it. That's it's awesome. Just theory. It's, it's just food. You can, yeah. You know what? With a good beer, you can't look it up. <laughs> I, I don't know. So. Christina beer. Nothing, that is. nothing I'm doing is all that complicated. <clears throat> she lied. <laughs> Well, he does more yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys. So we're, we're, we're almost, we're about to um, do the draw. Uh, we're giving away, well, I shouldn't say we, Patina is giving away a Patina t-shirt. That looks like this. Uh, and they're also giving away a $25 gift card to Patina. Um, so you all obviously see how well that can be used. So I'm gonna give that away in a second. I'm just gonna share some information of, from Patina. For anyone who wants to take a screenshot um, or press pause, but basically um, this is where they're located, phone number, follow them on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, here's their website, um, <clears throat> any information you guys need, all right, uh, I'm going to just share a little bit, uh, something from me as well here. So uh, firstly, I just want to thank the Chamber. Uh, for those of you who don't know, they, uh, we partnered up with them. They've made this possible as well. They're doing a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Um, so thank you so much to the Chamber for all your hard work. Um, in general, for Strive, hey, if anyone has any questions about an injury, you just want advice, want to talk about anything, call our hotline. You can talk to any one of our therapists, okay? So don't feel shy. Um, if you want to find out any, uh, like any information about future webinars, you can follow us on Instagram. We'll be updating all the time as well. You can see where to register there. Um, you can also go to the chamber website on their events page. Um, we're going to be adding webinars as we go. If you have any suggestions of topics you want, feel free to reach out to me. Um, <clears throat> and I'll do my best to get it going. Again, if you liked anything you saw here, Please keep following us, spread the word. We're really trying to support local and basically bring some entertainment to you guys. All right, so um, we are gonna do a draw here for the prize. Let's just see, I'm not making, sh leaving anything here. Ooh, pick me. That's right, I'll, I'll try, Martin. All right, so I will get rid of the screen share so you can see I'm not cheating. All right. So here we go, the winner. And yes, if it's Aaron or Sarah, you will not get the prize, unfortunately. The winner is, I, I don't know if there's a, a letter missing, Amr Thelem. So basically the prize is at Patina. Um, I will let them know who your name, uh, your name, and then you can just show up and tell them who you are and you won the prize from the webinar and you can pick it up. So with that, 
being said, we are done. Will and Christina, thank you so much for your time and showing us everything. Um, we wish you guys all the best moving forward. And of course, once we can start opening. And thanks everyone for coming again. Really appreciate it. Um, stay safe and tune in. Oh yeah, sorry, one quick thing. Tomorrow we've got a pro golfer, Patrick Lago. I can't believe I almost missed this. Uh, one o'clock, so if you wanna learn tips, he's giving away a full one hour swing analysis. Uh, next week we've got Innovative Fitness. We've got a mental health uh, segment as well with a clinical counselor from Strawberries and Sunshine. And the following week we've got Vino Zen. They're coming on, they're doing a wine tasting class. So um, that's gonna be pretty cool as well. Anyways, thanks again. Everyone have a good night. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.